Today we're going to build a site using Sandbox. So you're going to right click in the upper bar menu, click on Sandbox and see this toolbar. We're going to click the second button, Build from Scratch, and compared to the lady in the corner, you're going to draw a very long line. The second click allows us to drag our cursor along the red axis. Again, draw a very long line. If you don't, I'll zoom in and draw just a short section, you won't be able to build a, lamp, a landscape. I'm going to double click it as a group so that I can start to manipulate the topography. I'm going to choose the third icon that says Smooth. A diameter will appear. Again, you click on the surface and drag up. Remember that you had to double click to get in this surface in the first place. Next, we're going to build a cube. I'm going to use the R rectangle tool and then push-pull this option upward so that we create an imaginary building. I'm going to right-click that cube and make it a group. Then I'm going to pull that cube over the surface and use it to establish a building pad that is either above ground or below ground. I see the cube is within the group, so again double click the group of the topography. I like the top view to pull that cube over a hill site. And then I'm going to use a drape tool. or rather stamp. I'm going to touch my object, click stamp, touch the surface, and then move my cursor up and down in order to create that building pad. Use your M Move tool to pull the building down into the basement building pad. I'm building a site for the O Dial Deck project. We're going to begin by drawing a rectangle that is 400 feet in the Y axis and 600 feet in the red axis. Another way of building a topography is to first draw an elevation. I'm using the front view, connected a vertical to the right base triangle, and then use the two-point arc tool to create topography deleted extraneous lines, and I'm going to push-pull this object across the 400-foot face. Go into Google Earth and find the Odile Deck residency site at the address on the right-hand side of the screen. Take a snip of this site by measuring at first a 600 by 400 foot area that encompasses St. Ange Residency and save it to your desktop.
make sure to get it on the upper left hand corner of the image. We're going to import that in SketchUp by going to File Import, finding your image, and hitting Import. I want to make sure this is at the correct scale, 400Y, 600X. I'm going to use the Measuring Tape tool Click the bottom left of the image, the upper left, and then use my keyboard, 400 apostrophe for feet, enter. And this sizes the image, which is still within its own group. Anything we scale in a group will only scale what's in that group. And that's how we contain um, the ability of SketchUp to scale the only items we would prefer it to be scaling. If you didn't draw your landscape a 400 by 600, you can always use the image now to resize it using the Scale option tool. Now we're going to paint the site onto the topography. When I hit the paint bucket, a toolbar arrives on the right-hand side of my screen. And specifically, I'll be using an eyedropper tool, but first we must explode our image. So that the tool of the eyedropper can pick up the image. So I click the image right-clicked explode, found the tool dropper, clicked it, and then used the paint bucket to paint the image. You need to find five floor plans of Odile Deck's residency. We're going to import those floor plans using the same file import tool, and then make sure that they are each to scale. I'll compare my Google Earth view with the mezzanine view here to the right. Let's learn a little bit more about Odile Dex artist residency called St. Ange. This project is located in France. Odile Deck is a, an architect that studied in France. She started her own firm in 1979 and then in 2014 decided that she was going to open up a school. For the St. Ange residency, she was tasked with creating a building on the site of an owner who'd like to host artists in residency. She talks a little bit about her, her interactive, intuitive process, the way that she uses model making to create her forms, as we can see in the example here. It is not an easy form to create. And she was inspired by the Grenoble mountainous region. So you can zoom around in Google Earth to see the mountains that she's discussing. And she wanted to create a lookout tower toward those mountains for this project. So the artist's residency. This is an award for those who provide portfolios or lectures and win a time period in a different place where they can study or perfect and complete work on the site of a residency. In many different places, these can range from a few weeks to maybe even six months or a year, but the majority of the space we'll be looking at is given over 
to this artist space. That's the two-story volume you see on the bottom. That lit window that we see in the left image gives us a view into the clear story, bright windows. That's the bottom base of this entire building. And we see a few different views of the tower as we move around in different images. These are going to help us create the building in SketchUp. Also find a section or an elevation view so that we can import that image after understanding the levels. We're going to rotate that, which will help us create the overall volume. So let's look at the floors. You're going to import the images, arranging the floors from the bottom of the page to the top of the page as a building grows toward the sky itself. So start on the base. We see the location of the garage door on the left bottom image and a circular stair that's going to organize and orient us from the bottom of this residency building all the way to the lookout Bellevue Tower. Locate the second floor above this first floor plan. It has a mezzanine with an entry door. And then before we get along too far, why don't we scale the residency? Judging by Google Earth, it's either 22 feet or 30 feet. This is not an exact representation. We're going to work with the 30 foot dimension, but I noticed that the image I brought in is about five to six feet wide. So I'm going to use the measuring tape tool in order to scale this properly. Again, when we scale things in SketchUp, it's nice to make them a group first so that it's not scaling the entire file. So let's make a group. Use the tape measuring tool. And we're going to click the bottom edge of the building and then the top left edge. And I'm going to type in 30 feet using that apostrophe tool. Enter. And I'm going to go look to see if my dimension has accurately sized the building for what I'd like it to be, and it has. Let's continue to import the third, the fourth, and the fifth level. Third level has the kitchen. Again, we can see the organization around the center stair, casework, and a kitchen table. Some interior images also help. And then import level four, which is the bedroom. And level five, which is the tower above that. So continue to import those files. Again, group them together so that you're not scaling the entire drawing of SketchUp. And we will meet at how to arrange those floors level to level. So here's how I've gotten around that. I can either group the images and scale them in a group. It doesn't uh, affect my whole model then. Or if we, you have, do you have one image that is to scale, the correct scale? Okay. Um, I'm gonna go in top view and I'm going to use the line L tool to grab just the drawing edge. And I'm gonna draw two guidelines, one from the left side, one from the right side, And then instead of using the measuring tape, 
It's not ideal, I know. I'm going to touch the image that I need to be to scale. Hit M move and just align the top right corner with the guideline I just drew. And then use the scale tool on the left column and I click that. And with my eye, I'm just going to shrink that image instead of using the measuring tape. I think most of you are on a good path for the plan. I had a few other drawings in there, the sections. So I'm going to zoom in. I pulled in a section of the tower where we see that center stair. I rotated it to be in line with the edge of my building. And then I rotated it in the vertical dimension to bring it up. I can still scale in this direction as well by using that same tool, right? So if this wasn't big enough, I could manipulate it there. If you have all of your drawings aligned, why don't you try to rotate the section in this direction? So the way I'm going to tackle this turning tower volume is to draw an outline of the entire base floor to start. I'm going to go to the top view and trace. So I'll use my L line tool. And close as possible. Follow the edge of the building. If my image gets in the way, I'll move it off 10 feet or so. some point, I should be able to get a surface. And then I'm going to offset using the offset command. Select the outside line, select the interior, and delete the middle. So now I have an outline. I'm going to move my image back 10 feet. Then I'm going to draw a vertical line from the back right edge of the surface until it reaches the top of the section. I'm going to use that eventually to align my other floors. So then on every floor, because the second story is actually the same as the first, I don't, I can skip the second story. But for every third, fourth, and fifth floor, I'm going to do that same outline. Get a surface, hit offset, and delete the center. I can't just extrude the volume because of all the ways in which it twists and turns. Okay. And then what I'm going to do with each floor, so I'll take the third floor to start, triple click it, hit M for move, and then I'm going to look for the third floor on my section, and because I drew the vertical line, I can snap 
that edge point to the third floor. So I use triple click M for move on the back right edge point and align it to the floor. And then we don't have a roof plan. So what I'll do for um, the last level is actually simply just extrude. By push pulling that last level, drawing a line to close off the top part of my form, I'm going to leave the roof just like that. From here, you might choose to make each of these floors a group so that when I start push pulling or drawing lines, my new lines don't attach to old volumes. So let me do that part and then I'm going to come around and help. I'm going to select only one floor at a time, right click to make it a group. Why not? I'll just go ahead and push pull, double click the group to work in it. Push pull this volume up to the second floor. All right, so I'm going to leave it here for now. Remember to hit save every so often. I will say one thing here too. Like you could from this point start to use the edge lines to connect the dots, right? And start to form your volume this way or if that's too frustrating you can go into the group and push pull this up they're not going to align perfectly but that's fine we're doing other things in here um, in this exercise beyond making this perfect it's already to scale We'll take a look at how um, the top tower is projecting. If you're at that part and curious about how that is working. Okay, so um, at times I'm just looking at the images and trying to figure out what each face White faces for now, or maybe if I have lines that I want to hide, you can do that too. You are going to have to create a few images of this project, but I need to teach you how to take a section because we haven't done that yet. And after we take a plan and a section view and save images, we're actually going to go upstairs to the graphics lab for a quick Photoshop tutorial. So, finish what you're doing, and I want you to find a tool, new tool in your toolbar called Section. So I'll hold my cursor here for a second.
All right. So right click in the empty space, click section. And now we have a new toolbar. So you're going to have to take four views in your PDF online. I tell you what those views are to be on a Photoshop slide. Those views need to be, if I can get there, a plan, roof plan, site plan, a section, and an elevation. Okay, I know we're not done yet. We're going to continue working on this Monday. But I want to teach you how to do sections so you can take those pictures. So we're going to zoom into your object. I believe everybody has something in 3D. And I'm going to click the section plane tool. When I click that, I have this floating view that sort of acts like the rotation tool, meaning if I want to constrain it on one face, I can either hold shift or I can use an arrow. So if I let it turn blue and hold shift and click again, say okay to the section, what it's going to do is take a cut of a section. I've made mine too low. Of wherever it is that you place that plane. So I'll click the section button again. Hit blue, hit it on a whoops, blue. And hopefully this works. Let's see. All right, when it's blue, hold shift. And I'm getting a floor plan cut section. Is that working for everyone? It was a little finicky for me. Okay, great. So from that plan view, right, I can go to the top view and I can snip an image that I can put on my final poster. We're going to do the same thing for section. We can either click the section buttons again to get us out of that view. Or we can delete that section um, when we hit escape. But let's just click um, do the buttons one more time. Oops. This time, in order to create a vertical section, just like the one we used in order to organize our floors, we're going to lock it on an orange plane. Hit OK for that section. So this is organizing our section for us in SketchUp. And you'll go to a front view and take a snip of that. These are not really refined SketchUp models. But the point of this is so that I know um, you, you have an understanding of what plan sections and elevations are. I think once we set up your Photoshop file um, and you have areas to fill in with certain drawings, it'll make taking the right images easier too. Okay. Say it again. It, nah, it doesn't need to be at a halfway point. That's fine. Um, and so what I'm doing with my fast instruction today is I'm going to create a video about building Odal deck from start to finish. And this will be included. So the next lecture you see on Blackboard won't be anything new for you. But if you need to go back and reference it, you'll have that as a resource. Okay. So when I hit my third display section cut, I am back to my normal view. If I want to get rid of any of these sections, I just touch them 
and hit delete. And I've got quite a few in there. 